Hello, my name is Ryan. I'm an interpreter for California State Park Sports Program, and I'm here on the west shore of Lake Tahoe at Sugar Pine Point State Park. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the formation of Lake Tahoe, kind of an overview, so sort of like the last 24 million years in under five minutes or so. Um, and we could think of geology as an active history or autobiography of the Earth, written unwittingly or not, that's your choice. And the story of Tahoe's formation is actually really exciting and includes volcanic eruptions, vast rivers of ice, tsunamis, earthquakes, um, and we actually have a place in this story as well. So to understand, to begin to understand how Tahoe formed, you don't need a lot of background information, but we do need to understand that the earth is covered in tectonic plates. So these big puzzle pieces of land that sometimes slide up against one another and sometimes duck underneath or over one another called subduction. And this gives rise to things like canyons, mountains, earthquakes, and other geologic processes, including tsunamis. Um, so we have to imagine the Tahoe landscape about 24 million years ago when this lake wasn't here, it was more of a valley and the mountains behind me were not nearly as dramatic. And Around this time, the Carson Range behind me and the Sierra Nevada started to rise due to the subduction of the Pacific Plate underneath the Continental Plate. So I'll show you a graphic here. So imagining that we're over here in San Francisco, and here's the Pacific Ocean. The plate that the Pacific Ocean sits on starts to subduct underneath the Continental Plate. And so as that land goes towards closer to the center of the earth where it's really hot, all that energy has nowhere to go but up. Just like when you're boiling some water for a cup of tea or something like that. Uh, all that energy moves upwards and this gave rise to the mountains behind me as well as in front of me, the Sierra Nevada and the Carson Range. And so the valley between these two, between these two mountain ranges formed faults or cracks and the valley started to sink. So while the valley was sinking, the mountains surrounding started to rise. And so you can imagine that all the precipitation that fell on these mountains ended up trickling down into this valley. So it started looking a little bit more like a pond or maybe a little bit swampy, um, but still a far cry from the vast lake that we have today. Um, and this was around three million years ago. So we're kind of fast forwarding time with our minds. And this swampy valley became a lake basin about two to three million years ago, most likely from volcanic eruptions on the northwest part of the lake which then closed the basin and allowed the water to rise. Mount Pluto erupted, can't quite see it, it's behind some of those trees over there, and dammed the outlet where the water uh, was originally draining with lava, volcanic soil, and mud flows, which caused the lake to rise to a higher level than what we have today, over or around 600 feet. So I would be well underwater where I'm standing right now at this time. Uh, and this lava dam was eventually eroded away and failed, which sent huge, huge boulders and floods down the river all the way to Reno. So actually huge boulders the size of semi-trucks were deposited all the way down in, into the Nevada area. Um, so following these faulting and volcanic periods, an ice age developed uh, less than a million years ago. And basically glaciers began to sculpt the Tahoe landscape as we know it with huge wide U-shaped valleys uh, and steep polished granite mountainsides and glaciers are basically moving rivers of ice. So parts of the west shore of Tahoe would look like this and this actually is a graphic of the west shore of Tahoe. And you see you can imagine that as rivers themselves, water rivers, pick up material and deposit them elsewhere, you can imagine that rivers of ice pick up even more material and are able to move huge boulders. Um, and this is actually how a lot of the smaller lakes in the Tahoe area formed. Um, but anyway, these glaciers begin to, to sculpt the Tahoe landscape, and uh, one of these glaciers covered the Truckee River, which was, again, then the only outlet of Lake Tahoe. So that caused the lake level to fluctuate again and caused another violent flood down the present-day Truckee River. So um, as this ice age ended, the glaciers melted and flowed into Lake Tahoe, and Slowly, as these glaciers receded, life began to flourish here due to the water and soil made available, first in the form of plants, 
having traveled here by the wind, then mammals later being able to feed on those plants, and then ultimately predators like, like us humans. So we have glaciers to, to thank, at least in part for the diversity and abundance of life that we have here in Tahoe, as well as the dramatic landscapes. And so this is basically how we ended up with the lake that we have today, but one more really dramatic thing happened. These glaciers that I mentioned weakened the land on the west shore of Lake Tahoe, and right over there, just past the trees, there's a bay called McKinney Bay. Um, and that land had been weakened. So about a two mile piece of land just sloughed off right into the lake, sending huge, uh, basically underwater avalanche into the lake, underwater landslide, which deposited huge boulders all the way into the center of the lake, which created huge waves, uh, kind of a wide range, but anywhere between 30 to 90 foot waves were just sloshing back and forth in the lake. And since it's self-contained, there's nowhere for these tsunamis to go as, as they, in, in the ocean, a tsunami has the opportunity to dissipate before it reaches the land, whereas in Tahoe, it just stayed here and sloshed back and forth, just like when you disturb the water in a bathtub or something like that. And so this basically brings us to present day in Lake Tahoe, um, where natural aging is causing Lake Tahoe to fill with sediment by about one foot every 3,200 years. And at this rate, Lake Tahoe will be a meadow in three million years. Um, so a lot of meadows form from just being dried up lake beds. It's pretty, pretty amazing. But erosion is not an inherently bad thing and has always been a part of the formation of Lake Tahoe. However, we as a society are increasing this rate of erosion by um, first having clear cut the land, which doesn't happen anymore, and now more so by the urban expansion that's happening in the area and the introduction of invasive species. So this basically shows us how geology, watersheds, and society are all so intimately connected that it's becoming increasingly difficult to speak of them as separate entities. So thank you for joining me.